I guess this is going to be the the our, our little discussion for uh, Beta Branch Patch Version 50, which was uh, released on September 12th, which, um, like we were talking before we started recording, um, there are some things in this that are fixes that have been a long time coming, and then some things that are uh, requested features, essentially. So uh, I guess my question about this Beta Branch, is there anything specifically that you walked, worked on here that you would like to talk about? Let's see, the alert thing was... Uh, that's all and crash logging that's all me the i mean like the the way you access it isn't but the screen itself is and that was fun I had to write a bunch of widgets for it. it it's a lot more easy to muck with than uh a lot of uis are for df hack so if the organize so if like one might want to change the organization that should be pretty doable actually with df hack that sort of thing like that's an that's an intentional design choice on my part to make it easier to uh, mess around like that when it comes to the um the the, the report screen there's a, a few kind of quirks with it that i've noticed that i i wanted to kind of pick your brain about so first off it's like it's a button up in the top left of the UI that you click on and then it kind of expands down and there's a whole bunch of different tabs that you can select. Um, and it kind of, it, it's essentially a full screen window, even though it's not quite full screen, but it fills up the majority of the screen real estate. I, I guess my, my question to do with it is some things are like super sor easily sorted and like easy to scroll through. And then some menus, I actually can't find anything in them, specifically like the combat logs one. Like I can't figure out the rhyme or reason to how it's sorted. Like it feels like sometimes the new ones pop up at the bottom, sometimes the new ones pop up at the top, and sometimes they pop up in the middle. Um, there is a tab that says death on it that has never actually had a notification in it, even though many things have died. So I, I guess my question is like, how completed is this screen and um, how do you feel about the current state of it? It's designed to be uh, modified easily. So if, if there's obvious issues like that, like organizational issues, then it can, that should be easy to fix, easier to fix than like if it were all, uh, like the, the, the thought was mostly to get a screen working at all. And then like if there's quirks that can be easily put together in another patch at some point. Uh, I tested it with like a few different forts, and it all seemed to work fine. But it's you know, there's a there's a lot of announcements in the game, and I didn't. Uh, I guess I could have like wrote up a quick test script to like just spam every announcement at once and go through all that. But it was didn't really have the time to do that because the reports view is its own thing. Because I had to write a lot of uh, code to make sure that was like real time updatable. So something else that I, I, I've noticed about it is like the ghosts tab. If there's a ghost active, there will be something in the ghosts tab, which is really useful. But if you memorialize the ghost, then it disappears. And I would love to have a list of ghosts that had been there previously instead of it just like naturally clearing itself when the ghost is memorialized. It does that? That's weird. Like it, it's, it's just taking... It's just going through every announcement and putting them into the buckets, the the proper bucket. That's all it's doing. So if the announce, so if the announcements are disappearing when the ghost is memorialized, that means that the game is like outright just removing the announcements that the ghost had in the first place ever, which seems odd to me. Which leads me to wonder what exactly is going on with the the death screen, um, because like when the death screen pops up. Uh, or like the, the the death screen tab has like never not been grayed out for me, even when there's like 10 death notifications on the left hand side. So it's like 50 dwarves just died. All right. I'm going to go look at the de like at the notifications tab to see if there's if the death one is open now. And it never is. The funny thing is that the, the way the deaths tab works, it literally if it goes into the death like thing on the left, then it goes into the deaths tab. It, it's the same thing. So I don't so that I'm going to need to have to look into that, I guess. Sheesh. Sorry to kind of start this off as just like um, me me talking about weird quirks that I've found. But like weird quirks aside, I, I think it is a really cool screen. I think my my favorite addition to the game has probably been the ability to uh, see the real-time combat logs. 
uh, specifically from a dwarf, even though I don't find myself unpausing that often, I sometimes will turn the little step counter on the little pause button, unpause and like watch an event go by and then close that screen and move to another one. But what I do find myself doing quite frequently is looking at a fight and then clicking on a dwarf and popping open their combat log instead of using the combat log we had before, which is the like one on the left having to scroll down the thing. It's way easier to just select a dwarf and click on that little menu. So I think that little menu is probably my favorite addition from the whole new system. Yeah, uh, I made I made it so that you could basically open that anywhere, and it, it's like sizable too. It doesn't have to be the exact size. It's nice. Uh, the so like adding it to the uh, unit sheet was kind of a last second thing because I real because like you know I was like, hey, that would be really convenient and nice, and it is. Turns out. Mm-hmm. You you said that it's resizable. I, I think like in a perfect world, there would be a button to make it the same size as the tiny little notifications. I know for some reason, everybody wants the full screen notifications back, but the ability to like pause and unpause while still being able to see the fight would be kind of awesome. Yeah, in a perfect world, you could like move around all the windows and everything. And that, that's, that's, I mean, that's sort of happening, like not really happening right now, but it, like there's all of the framework to get that going is like percolating I, I i know that like that functionality is in df hack you can move that window around but like i i don't need i don't necessarily even feel the need to be able to move the windows around in in like the vanilla game it's mostly just like if we had like a minimize button that could resize it to a locked size like i, I think that's more than enough currently yeah so another nice thing about the way it's put together uh df hack can add that pretty painlessly should be able to uh i might like if if they don't have widget stuff put together, I might add it myself actually to DF hack just because that's the the the, the intent of it is to make it like a system that's usable with memory hacking. It's all very data driven, yeah. Like on purpose. Like, Ideally, like, like you could use the raws even, but I didn't have raws <laughs> written for it yet. Because this is all running on the the stuff that you talked about a a, couple, a few conversations back about making widgets for. Um, being able to make m new menus easier, correct? Yeah, and the announcement screen and the report screen, those are the first that like really ended up in game. That's neat. I, I, I'm i glad to kind of start to see like the, the little fruits of your labors showing up in, in, in the game itself. But uh, it's, it's also interesting to me to hear that um, the addition of the uh, combat log on the dwarf uh, UI was kind of a last minute decision because one of my personal biggest gripes with this version is the lack of usability of like the dwarf UI um, because there, there was a lot of functionality that used to be built into the individual dwarf profile screens in the older versions that I don't think anybody used because everybody just went through um, either DF hack or dwarf therapist and I, as somebody who never really used those extensions in the older versions of the game um, I, I find myself uh, running into issues with the dwarf screen because, like, you know, I think the button that I keep talking about is the fact that you used to be able to add a dwarf to a squad from the dwarf's profile, which you can't do now. Um, so it's nice to see usable buttons showing up in the dwarf's profiles again. Like, the main thing I've been working on lately is just making all the unit lists one nice monolith that can be all modified at once. And it's been a bit slow going because, like, they forgot to include item units at first and now i have to write a bunch of stuff for item units you know vermin for like pet lists and things that's all fun but it's that 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 is going though i have the unit lists like working like the main display when you hit i, I don't remember the hotkey but the button in the top left of the screen what the, the the screen that used to be on you the screen formerly known as you it's the unit screen, yeah, it's the uh, the creatures screen. I think it's creatures. Yeah, something like that. That's all. But this is about the current version. Uh, the I do want to talk about the crash logging a bit. It's Windows only because it it, it was actually last minute, and uh, I just wanted to make sure there was something in for this version because I'm just like perpetually mildly annoyed with the friction of like having to download a save and then find the save in my of my incredibly huge list of saves now and sometimes i can't even replicate the crash but like you know if there's logging they can just put paste that file in and then that's good because i can actually uh check the crash from there 
with like Win Debug and such. So that's all good. If you have a crash with 50.10 on Windows, then uh, please, there's a new crash reports folder. Uh, take just just link the little text file there into the bug discussions thing, or put it onto an attachment on the forums or something. I guess my question about crash logging is, am I Mandela affecting myself, or didn't Dwarf Fortress have crash logging previously? No. Really? <laughs> yeah. So never had crash logging? Not that oh. I know of. Uh, not, like, formally. I think you might have been able to go into event viewer or whatever, but, like, that's a lot to ask. How, you said that that was last minute. Like, how, like, when did you decide to throw that in, and what was the process of uh, putting that together like? Uh, last Thursday. Uh, wow. <laughs> took a, I... Just grabbed an open source thing off the internet and verified that it wouldn't do anything crazy. I mean, I, I figured it wouldn't because it's from like a known game dev, Tyler Glale, or however that's pronounced. And I just I just tossed it in. Huh. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it, it worked. Uh, it, it, it was surprisingly easy. I expected it to take longer. That's that's funny. Uh, well, I'm, I'm glad that that's in now. Um, uh, kind, kind of... Uh... Uh, and and you say like specifically like if people have crashes you want them to go into the kitfox discord in the bug reports section or on the forums correct uh yeah or like wherever really uh as long as, long as, as they're accessible yeah not the steam forums probably i don't go there it's a lot of weird noise yeah it's, it's a lot of angry people shouting in a direction and nobody's sure which one um the uh the the, the next one I, I i have to thank i i don't know who fixed this one but uh the fixed crash and from removing zone uh with an assigned unit uh i would like i'd say that's probably my the number one thing that's crashed my game in the last couple months <laughs> and i like i know exactly i knew exactly how to replicate it and i would still crash it half the time um so i'm, I'm glad that that's fixed yeah, I, I took a sledgehammer to it. If you remove a zone, it just steps through every single unit and goes, hey, were you assigned to this? Were you assigned to this? And so, like, since you're not removing zones that often, I figured that wasn't a performance issue. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, fair. Um, I I mean, like, there there is times where I have to remove, like, eight zones, but it's they're very rarely things that are assigned to units. It's usually, like, um, usually if I'm removing, like, ten zones in a couple seconds, it's because they're all, like, I, I, these are all pit pond zones and they're all on a single tile because I'm trying to fill five Z levels worth of water or something. Um, and dwarves are just running back and forth with buckets. So I just put like 20 zones right there and then delete them all in one click, but those never have like units assigned. So, um, uh, the, the, the next question I have is a, a multi-threading crash related to announcements. What's up with that? Two announcements at once that are caused by units seeing things. They would both happen at the same time, and when you have enough announcements, and you will in any uh, fort that's gone on specific, uh, long enough, then your uh, it'll delete an announcement to make room for the new one, and two, uh, two threads deleting an announcement from the same place at the same time is no good at all. So that, that, that was bad. That is fixed. That was the main, that was the only crash relating to multi-threading I ever saw. I got, like, five reports, some of them from people who, like, and, and like, I, I knew, I know it's more widespread than even the reports uh, suggest, because I was getting, like, just random people who know me from completely unrelated things set, telling me, hey, there's a crash with this save, can you check it out? And I do, and I turn off multi-threading, and I don't get the save, and I, tur and I don't get the crash, I turn it on, and I do, and I'm like, yeah, this is the announcement's crash, just turn off multi-threading for 10 seconds and turn it back on. <laughs> it's good that that's gone. Yeah, no kidding, because that, that's one that, to like the average layman, is just a crash, and I'm mad now, right? Um, so am ammo works now. I, I think that's the one that has the most people excited right now, aside from like maybe crash. Uh, there's like a dozen people that are just like jumping up and down with happiness about crash logging, but everybody else is just like excited about um, like the ammo fix. So what what exactly was like the issue and how what what is the solution? Because I, I have a hunch as to what the solution was. I, I know that a large portion of the issue was just the lack of being able to assign specific types of ammo, but. Uh, I'd I'd love to hear it in your words. I only know as much as you do. Uh, this was all Tarn. The uh, ammo assignments are updated properly when changing uniforms. That is a very indicative uh, phrase that phrasing, though. So I guess what was happening, like if you changed the uniform at all, it would just 
But like Emma would probably be getting stuck, and also when changing uniforms, that doesn't just suggest like changing the uniform itself. That's suggest- I think that might mean like they weren't updating their ammo assignment when they were going from civilian to military. So that could be really bad. I'll look into that a bit. Removing ownership of food items whenever they're dropped is also Altarn, which is also a uh, you know big cause for celebration. I've I've mostly been focusing on the crashes because those. I see a crash and I like, oh no, that's really bad. That needs to be fixed now. Uh, I did, I did see a handful of comments saying, "Removed ownership of items." Does this mean that dwarves have gone full Marxist? And it's like, read the rest you, of the like, sentence. Did you miss one word? <laughs> like, only food items, and it's only when they get the food items assigned to them, which only happens when they're in the military. Um, but it, it seems like a very simple solution to what was a very annoying problem in the game for a really long time. Yeah, like people. <laughs> People are like, oh, putting doors in the military makes them unhappy, and I, I half suspect that, no, no, it's the miasma making them unhappy. They love the military. <laughs> I, in my experience, dwarves that do not dream of mastering a skill will eventually become, uh, become unhappy. Yeah, that's fair. Well, that or they end up in battle, and that just ruins them. But I haven't checked in the code, but as I recall from, like, directly testing and, like, staring at the numbers in 47... With, like, DF hack, bravery is the biggest uh, thing that does this, which I, I, makes sense. So the crash with Monarch Rival is fascinating. Uh, it's not a crash. It wasn't a crash on Windows. I have no idea how it wasn't a crash on Windows. It was checking that you that the Monarch is null and then checking that they are the Monarch or whatever. It, it should have been checking that they're not null. So uh, the Monarch was not properly providing more... So on Windows, this bug appeared as the Monarch is not providing more uh, wagons like they were intended to. On Linux, this bug showed as the game crashes if you uh, don't have a Monarch and do have certain other stuff. So that's bad. That That's fixed now. Like, how how, how did you come to the conclusion of what was causing it? Like, uh, what, what, what was the searching process for it like? I compiled the game on Linux, loaded the save I was provided, ran it through GDB, and found the exact line that was crashing, and looked at that, and I was like, ah, oh, that's not right at all. Better fix that. Yeah, there's a lot of the potential crash related to certain traveling creatures. I just could not tell you. I, I, I did that one, and it, it, it is mildly baffling to me. Just some stuff huh. with itineraries and certain travel. I I almost wasn't gonna bring that one up because it's so like specific, but also at the same time non-specific. It's like fixed crash related to certain traveling creatures. What? <laughs> I I couldn't tell you what the traveling creatures they were. It it, it was it, it, it just happens sometimes. That is the, a very Dwarf Fortress-related pa- sounding patch note, though. Yeah, it, it's good <laughs> um, when these crash reports come in, though, because they're probably, like, all crash reports in general are generally more common than they appear. More crashes fixed is always good. Have you started getting any, uh, like, crash logs yet, or...? Uh, I've gotten one. I've gotten a couple. They were interesting. Okay. And, uh, let's see, one of them seemed to be, like, during file reading, which is bad. <laughs> and I don't know what to do with that. Uh, another one was like, all, I mean, all of them end with file reading stuff because the traceback includes literally writing the ca- the crash log. So you just have to ignore the first few lines of it. But, uh, one right. of them, the actual crash was during file reading and that's problems. Uh, yeah, no kidding. Creatures more able to get out of trees. It's actually more general than that. Yeah, yeah, what's funny about the tree creatures being able to get out of trees is it's probably just because I'm in, like, a, a surface fort in Untamed Wilds and every single thing attacking me are birds. Um, but there are a lot... I've had a lot of dwarves die in trees since updating to the beta branch and none previously. So I, I think it's just the fact that the birds are getting worse. But, like... Uh, I, I would blame uh, the birds. <laughs> they, they, they're, they're trying to attack the birds... Is the problem? Yeah, they're chasing they're chasing the birds and trying to climb trees. Like I've seen some dwarves do some whack things. Like I'm building a giant tower in the middle of an untamed forest, and like I've seen dwarves like jump off the tower and then climb down thirty Z levels. <laughs> so like, yeah, I, that I don't is know. probably the fault of the patch actually, because what well, it really. says is made creatures more able to get out of trees. But what it actually means is, if a unit is unable to path, then Instead of just saying error log, path fail, it'll uh, try climbing and jumping to get where it wants to go instead of 
uh, giving up on the spot and error logging. And if it can't do it with climbing and jumping, it'll error log. I figure this is probably more desired behavior, but it might look weird sometimes. No, certainly. I think it's more just the game's perspective that makes it look weird. And I, <laughs> I, I actually completely agree that it's better desired behavior. But I, I do think it's kind of hysterical that that is a fix that co- or a change that comes in at the same time as ammo being fixed to a degree, because like Mark's dwarves and Archer dwarves are particularly guilty of this. They would vault through like uh, things they should before um, for no reason, just to go bonk things with their crossbows. So, I mean, yeah, that that's its own problem. (laughs) I think it's fixable. I think it's fixable in like an even more general way than like one might think because the, fact is that you can just sort of like crossbows are so terrible as melee weapons that you can just use their awfulness as like a property to check for like if your weapon in your hands is like just a genuinely bad melee weapon then don't then run away instead of attacking no you throw it at them and then punch them and like i think that'll be nice because then you'll get them not just running away if they're using a you know if they're using crossbows, but also if they're, like, using a wooden mace or an adamantine hammer or something. So, like, like I, I that that's, that's my hope for the future, I guess. <laughs> to at least I, sort I, of recognize how good their weapon actually is. Back in, uh, I think it was spring, Tarn and Zach were talking about, like, drafting up a fix for uh, making crossbow dwarves more reliable AI-wise, and I assume nothing is really like surfaced of that eh? i don't i don't know about any plans related to that in particular uh okay yeah i I mean i've been in my own hole so it's it's fine uh mid-level map retrieval so that one's interesting it it would just do a linear search through the mid maps to see if it was already made mid-level maps being like when you're in the embark screen and you have clicked on the thing and you're going through the smaller the the zoomed in map that's the mid maps and uh it would just do a linear search to see if it had already generated it as you were moving around, and that linear search would get, you know, oh, and it'd just get slower and slower, and on large worlds, this would actually get intractable. I just made it, I just added a little cache for it. Uh, so, on the initial beta release, there are actually a lot of crashes relating to that, because I forgot to inv- I forgot to invalidate the cache quite often. It needed to be updated a lot more often, so there would just be a cache pointing to a bunch of horrible, like, already deleted pointers as soon as you if you like entered the embark screen and then left it and then entered a different world that would crash every time that that was bad that was fixed though i guess that was the patch that came in the other day (laughs) yeah Um, but uh uh, there's uh, also optimized relationship uh look up for socializing dwarves which i'm assuming was something you had a hand in that was the second slowest thing in the game (laughs) that was uh like Basically, uh, units would do a binary search through every historical figure to check if, like, the one they were looking at was their mom. And now it just... N- now now they've cached the exact index of their mom, so they don't have to do that. It's a lot faster now. Uh, like, that one thing alone was the main cause of, like... Uh, I have a 260 dwarf, like, unit fortress that runs at, like, 70 to 80 FPS on my CPU, current CPU. Wow. It would drop to 40 uh if there were too many of these happening at once <laughs> so it's it's that sort of thing also I, I so uh don't actually expect performance that good always i must be doing something right i legitimately don't understand how it's so fast i get 200 door forts that are like at 20 fps but i also get 200 door forts that are at 120 sometimes so i it, it's hard to tell I could send you a link to the actual fortress itself, but I did a community for it relatively recently, and I'm trying to look up which one it was, um, which was a very, very, very large fortress, which also ran at, like, 80 frames a second on my computer. It was, like, close to 300 dwarves, and I wasn't quite sure how they did it, <laughs> and still kind of I'm, I'm not. Um, so the... All right, here's the secret, and I shouldn't tell people this because they'll they'll take it too far. Small embarks are worse for performance when you get a lot of dwarves. Uh, Okay. Because they're all, like, sort of technically able to see each other, maybe, and they have to to actually check if they can see each other. Uh, Larger embarks have that just happen less often, and the more skipping there is, the better that is. The multi-threading has mitigated this a lot, but it's still, like, a bit of a weirdness. 
So, like, the ideal size might actually just be 4x4, four four, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Um, it's worse if you're in, like, a jungle or something. Like, that, yeah, that makes to, it a lot worse. To, to clarify, this 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 fort had uh, uh, 150 dwarves, which isn't huge, but was running at 90 frames a second on my computer on a pretty large embark uh, with two waterfalls and a bunch of other things. It was called uh, Eastward. But, um, yeah, I... I, I think that like when it comes to large embarks, the, the issues seem, at least for me, uh, like it runs well initially. And then very quickly what ends up happening is like this weird hitching where like it will run better in general, but maybe every five to 10 minutes, the game will just stop for 30 seconds for like no real discernible reason. And I don't know why that happens, um, but only if it's like seven by seven or above. Path rebuilding takes a lot longer on bigger maps and that can happen bigger maps are a bit of a double-edged sword because like it'll be faster generally but if like there's a fire your fps is going to completely tank to like one <laughs> for a while so fixed out of bounds issue with wheelbarrows i remember this but i don't remember it <laughs> sorry i also it's not in the patch notes i also made start dwarf work again the F hack. I made it a global value. You can start with as many dwarves as you want. I also made it not crash with less than seven, so you can start with one dwarf if you want. Yeah, it's it's fun for various things. That should just be a prepare carefully feature. <laughs> Maybe. Crash where there's invalid languages, that's actually all there is to it. If someone removes a language from their mod, they shouldn't, but it might happen. That won't crash anymore. It just checks for that now. Huh. Okay. And then made broker leave depot when last wagon leaves instead of first. I what explain? Uh, what would happen is simply if any, if any wagons left any depot, every broker on the map would just stop trading. <laughs> so that was, that, that was changed to, uh, only if there's no brokers, only if there's no traders trading at all, will they leave? This usually isn't a problem in vanilla because you usually only have the one depot, only the one trader at a time, but in modded games, this is a big problem. It's, it's really annoying. Or if you're me and you just like demand tribute from every single faction on the map and have 14 different factions show up. See, it, it, tribute's actually ex explicitly exempt from all of that. Like the broker doesn't care if a tribute thing shows up. They just come in, drop all their crap and leave tribute sure, guys. Sure, certainly. So. But what happens when you have a tribute guy is then the faction usually comes and trades with you as well, at least in my experience. Well, that'll be fixed at least. The, the, non, the non tribute like, ones are still counted. Like the ones that aren't just coming in, dropping their crap and leaving. Because like in, in Long Death, I famously for a while had, I think it was four different factions trading every summer. Yeah, which was a, a good time. It was like every single human faction was trading with us. And also bringing us free stuff. So usually I just sold them the tributes back. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I guess that kind of brings us to the end of the patch notes. So now now I get to ask you the fun question, which is what are you working on now? What are you excited about for the, the future? Uh, I'm working on the, let's see, the raw parsing rework i've got done with but that's a that's not coming for a long time because uh the impression i've gotten is that there's like adventure mode graphic stuff that's all put together and to mesh those together would be a like an undertaking so that's not coming until after adventure mode for sure i've got it like it's 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 all working now i've got everything working you can i even made it so that you can like add new creature tokens at runtime if you're feeling spicy or something but uh well the main thing i'm working on is just like reworking uh, making unit screens better like i want to add a search to it you know allow you to sort the squads squad additions so that by skill stuff and by name stuff like that i accidentally added a new profession sort that sorts professions by alphabetical order instead of by profession order that was really funny like i it, it I, I, I did the name sorting wrong, and it ended up sorting them by profession instead of by name. And I was like, wow, that's horrible. Wait, no, this this type of sorting isn't even in the game right now. I should I should just add that. It's like you got armorers first, and then, and so on. Actually, alphabetical. That's good. So that sort of thing is all over the place. Uh, like, I'm moving on to changing the all the unit selectors basically everywhere turns out they were all in one place already which is nice but like for pits spawns and such so that you can sort them it's probably for the best especially since like uh i think we might have fixed ghosts not showing up first in the slab but i don't remember 
but that's definitely something that I'm wanting to like include to sort of subsume into the unit list unification. All sorts of things. I don't know if uh, I don't think this ever showed up in the patch notes anywhere, but I I do know that like military dwarves no longer lose their nicknames when they kill things. Oh yeah, I fixed that. I think I'd like to say thank you to whomever fixed that because it's it's a lot easier to to it to not have to constantly be naming multiple things. Also, I think you can give certain type if if an animal has been adopted, you can give an animal a nickname. Otherwise, you still have to give it a custom role if it's if it's a stray. Um, so uh, my. Todd Howard cow uh, is uh, still named Todd Howard, thankfully. Yeah, there's a... Uh, oh, right. Uh, announcements. We, that, that wasn't mentioned in the patch notes. There is... You can go into the settings, the options. Just click settings, and then click announcements. And all of the announcements you can change if they pop up or pause the game or whatever. Or show... Oh, really? Words. Yeah, you could, you could do that right now. If you open up the beta, that, just go into settings. You can see it. That should very much have been in the patch notes because I'm sure a lot of people would like to see that. I'm going to go turn off all cancellation notifications now. Um, yeah, if you couldn't tell, I forgot <laughs> until just now. I, I, I was looking through... I, I, I am looking through like the, the Git history and I saw that and I was like, oh yeah, we didn't even put that in the patch notes. Just completely forgot about it. Oh no, but it is there. I, I know that like right now, a, a lot of the public questions are surrounding uh, adventure mode, which you, you probably don't have any hand in currently. I have not touched it. I, I've played a bit of it, but it was UI list and you just you, you just stuck into a random guy and not much to it <laughs> when, I, when I tried it. Man, playing like that thing without a UI, that's that's got to be a challenge. <laughs> um, is it, was it still just the old hotkey layouts and whatnot? Or? Uh, I'm not sure any of them worked except movement. <laughs> oh no! Okay. Yeah. yeah it's very, very much a work in progress, I suppose. It was, it was, the, um, it was the very first playable for build for the new version. So you know. Can, can I ask when this was? Like, when, when, when was it that playable? It was a few months ago. Okay. Yeah, All yeah. Right. Don't worry. That that's not like yesterday or anything. No, there's been a lot of progress since then. That that I know that. Good, good to hear. Um, I, I think a a a large source of the. Cons- not not concerned, but like the fervor that people have right now is just that there hasn't been any screenshots or anything shown publicly. And with Fortress Mode, there was like this very steady drip of like every other week, there was at least something to look at, even if it was just like, okay, so this is a sprite of a cat. Um, but like, it, I think it kind of got to a point where like people kind of knew what it was and what they're expecting. And right now, I think there's just a lot of question marks, which have a lot of people kind of nervous. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't even know what it's like. It's a very different sort of thing than fortress mode or there's like Mm -hmm. it's it's slightly more uh cohesive like there's a lot fewer moving parts that like can be done piecemeal if you get me there's just a lot of information on the screen by default yeah i i I think that like old door fortress so like pre steam uh, which it feels weird to say like old door fortress it's like that's not really a term an older versions of door fortress um there was actually kind of a, a cohesion between fortress mode and adventure mode. Like the UIs for those two different modes were absolutely inane and insane. But like, if you played a lot of one of them, the other one just kind of made sense, at least to me. Um, like you could kind of understand like almost the moon logic of like a Tarn's UI designing aesthetic. Um, so I, I guess like that, the big question that a lot of people have that I, I can't wait to be able to give to people eventually is just the, well, what, is gonna is that gonna go from fortress mode into adventure mode this time? Is it gonna be a similar looking UI or is it just gonna be a completely different beast with similar aesthetics? But um, I, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Um, the other thing that I've seen I've seen a lot of people talking about is uh, I know that there is a, a Linux build in the, the in the beta branch that people have been messing around with and testing, and I'm just curious as how how that is coming along. Uh, seems fine. I, I do get occasional like you know further. Like, obviously, the crash regarding uh, Monarchs was in, like, early Linux testing that I quickly found and fixed. There's uh, any other stuff I'm, like, trying to... I, I I got a report that I checked but couldn't replicate, which is always annoying, especially since I don't have crash logging up for Linux yet. There's... It seems to be doing fine, though. Like, if you couldn't tell by the fact that instead of, like, talking about how, like, this so-and-so thing is like not actually functional it's uh i mean announcements the announcements tabs was crashing the game on linux but i figured that out it was undefined behavior with the 
static string array, horrible sorts of deep C lore, C++ lore, talking about strings, dynamic initialization not necessarily happening yet. <sighs> <laughs> when you, when you expect it to, et cetera, it's changing it made it so that it's static initialization, that sort of thing that was fixed. Uh, that that's the big issue. The the only big issue I saw, and it seems to, that was fixed. So it seems like it's good. Should be good. The native Linux version. Yep. And then I guess beyond that point, uh, Mac is just simply locked behind you getting a Mac, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Something like that. Yeah. So. I know I've seen a lot of comments about Mac stuff recently. There was some stuff in the the future of the fortress about that. And, you know, I mean, it'll, it'll happen when it happens and everybody's looking forward to it, or at least anybody it's relevant to is probably looking forward to it, I would assume. So um, I, I, I guess at this point, it's just a, a matter of uh, thank you very much for, for coming on once again and uh, having a chat with me with about these patch notes and thanks for the insights. And uh, I, I look forward to patches ahead. All right, glibc has a bit of a problem with Linux. So if you got an older Linux version, it might not work right now. I'm not sure what the... I, I think you just might need to, like, compile it on an older version of Linux, but I really don't know. <laughs> like a like Ubuntu 20.04 LTS or something instead of whatever we're compiling on now. It's That's a bit of a mess. Everybody using Linux is just running nightlies. Come on. Let, let, let's... <laughs> yeah, what, maybe? <laughs> I, I would hope. <laughs> I mean, the fact that we know it's a problem... Suggests that someone True. tried to run it on an earlier version. True. This is the, you, you make a, a valid point here. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Th th thanks for uh, com coming on once again. And uh, I'm going to get into the editing room for this now. All right.